Hello everyone, I'm Potato Pleb. Welcome back to another chess opening video. Today we're going to once again talk about Vienna game. Uh, however, instead of talking about knight f6 variation, we're going to talk about knight c6 variation. If you want to look at what will happen if black plays knight f6 in this case, uh, please refer to my previous videos, which I will link in the uh, which I will leave a link to the playlist down below in the description. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Now, first of all, uh, when black plays knight, of, knight c6, what I would recommend is the move bishop c4. Now this is a very flexible move uh, because you can immediately target the f7 pawn and uh, you can also um, start thinking about um, developing the knight and castling. So I really like the move uh, knight, uh, bishop c4. Now it is worth noting that in this case, uh, black can immediately start targeting the bishop by playing um, knight a uh, knight a5. However, in this case, I would just recommend um, playing bishop e2, preserving your bishop, and just asking the question of what is this stupid knight doing on the a5 square. Um, so when that happens, you're just going to play that. And um, in a lot of cases, uh, black would play the move uh, bishop c5, copying uh, what, what white does. Now, this is officially called the Max Lang defense. However, um, in the internet, um, as referred by Gotham and a lot of different people, it is called the copycat variation. Now, the main move here is going to be uh, queen g4. Um, now, up to this point, I'm pretty sure almost everyone knows the theory behind it, where um, the best move for black is um, to go king f8. Um, but a lot of times, um, black will play the move uh, queen f6. Um, but before looking at the move queen f6, let's look at what will happen if black plays the move queen uh, king f8. Now, if, um, if black moves uh, to king f8, what you, what you have to do is you have to preserve your queen because it is being x-rayed by the bishop. So if you just um, fall asleep here and play a very natural move, uh, knight f3, um, black is going to play the move d5 targeting both the bishop and your queen so you just can't fall asleep here so you have to pull back your um, queen either to f3 or to g3 um, they're both perfectly fine squares um, and in a lot of cases i like to play the move uh, queen g3 because it gives a very flexible square uh, for my knight and after this uh, black will also play rather naturally um, either d5 d6 or knight um, F6 will be played here, um, but whatever uh, black does, I just like to develop very naturally, castle, and move on from there. Um, since this is not a major line, I'm not gonna deep. Uh, I'm not gonna dig deep into it. But the, uh, those are the basic ideas and the situations. So with that in mind, let's look at what will happen if black um, plays the move uh, queen f6, threatening to take the piece on. Um, f2, the pawn on f2. Now this is why this is called the Mises uh, Gambit or something like that on chess.com because what we're essentially doing is gambiting um, the f2 pawn here. So in this situation, we're going to play the move knight d5, targeting the queen and at the same time targeting um, the pawn on c7, threatening a fork. Um, when this happens, uh, what black would do is usually take on f2, checking the king. So the, there's there's basically only one move uh, for king here, and that's king d1. And after that, black follows that up by playing um, d6 in most of the cases. Uh, it is worth noting that um, a lot of uh, sometimes um, black would just simply go back here, um, trying to protect the fork. But that uh, but moving the queen back to d8 will uh, leave the piece, uh, leave the pawn on g7 uh, very vulnerable. And what you can do is just takes and you're going to win a rook on the next turn. So um, that's very simple. Um, so black has to basically take in this situation. And after queen, king d1, the best, absolute best move for black, uh, for black here is going to be um, king f8. And that's the engine best move, if I recall. Yep, king f8. And after that, uh, what you're going to do is um, play h3. Um, and then if 
um, black d decides to play the move d6, trying to trade queens like this way. Um, it fails because, uh, let me just demonstrate it for you, after knight takes, after bishop takes, knight takes again, and then we'll be up a piece. So that's why d6 uh, fails in this situation. So in a lot of times, um, queen will go back to d4, and then what we're going to do is we're going to protect our bishop by playing d6, threatening to trap the queen on the next turn, and um, bishop will usually go to the e7 square here. Uh, but sometimes it will go to b7. Um, but one way or the other, well, I don't know, my bad. One way or the other, uh, we're, you're going to play um, c6 anyways, and the game will continue from there. Uh, ooh, ooh, by the way, yeah. It's like this. Uh, and, <laughs> my bad, my bad. Just splendored the queen there. Uh, but anyways, uh, engine evaluates this position as 1.7. Um, so it's a very advantageous point, uh, I don't know, very advantageous um situation for black here and if white doesn't be careful uh, i mean if black doesn't be careful uh the queen can get trapped as well okay so with this in mind let's go back let's go back yeah so as you can see there are lots of sharp tactics in this situation so um make sure to be sharp get ready to be sharp and after takes uh what did i cover i covered the best move right king f8 Okay, so since I covered the best move, let me talk about other moves, uh, such as, uh, such as um, knight of six. Knight of six in this position. Uh, in this position, we're just going to take on um, g7 with our queen. Now, this is not checkmate, because our bishop is covering the f1 square, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, a lot of the case, a lot of times, um, black will think that playing this is a good move. Um, playing rook g8, thinking that it's protected and that it's targeting this weak pawn on g1, g2. However, this immediately fails. Um, first, there's a reason why we placed the knight here. It's so that we can take, so that we control these two squares, right? So we're just going to take on f6 anyways, checking the king, uh, attacking the rook at the same time. And if queen takes, then we take the queen. Um, if king moves, we're going to take the King, this basically checkmate in this situation. So king has to go uh, king um, e7, and then we take with knight, and look at this king. Like, this is not a happy queen, king. Like, I'm pretty sure it's it's pretty dead. Like, look at this. Check. Eh, okay. Yeah. Like, we're, we're borderline checkmating him, right? So you, you, you can, like, sit here and think about how you're going to win. Next, let's take a look at what will happen if black plays to move d6 in the max long defense. Um, in this situation, what we're going to do is just take on g7. And we have to be careful of the move h5. Now, if we take the rook on h8, we may run into some trouble. It's an inaccuracy because of the move uh, bishop g4. The only move that, uh, that, that that's, that's okay for white in this situation is 92. This is the only move that's okay. Um, however, we can run into a lot of trouble here. Um, let's say let's say you play the move uh, bishop e2 thinking that attacking this will be a good idea but this is just made in one because it's, it's the bishop's pinned. Um, if you think that you can um, block it like this with the knight, um, it won't work because after bishop takes uh, takes, check, and then we are running into a mating net. So this is checkmate. So the only move for black, uh, for white in this situation is knight g2. However, we don't want to run into this kind of trap, right? We don't want to just allow uh, bishop g4. So we need to stay patient. This rook is not going anywhere. What we have to do is be patient and play the move h3 preventing bishop g4 now let's say bishop g um, let's say bishop e3 trying to castle now we play knight f3 threatening to trap the queen um so the queen runs away and then we kill it if 
castles. We kill it. So in this situation, the only move going backwards. Going backwards. And now again, bam. After h3, engine evaluates this position as plus 6.5. Plus 6.5. Black can just resign. So now that we covered the copycat variation, we're going to look at the main line in this situation, which is going to be uh, knight f6. Now, it is worth noting that this highly, highly resembles um, the four knights Italian, where uh, black can do the center fourth trick here. So you need to be careful of that. However, um, what, what the move that I would recommend in this situation is actually d3, uh, which is actually a transposition into the bishop's opening, the Vienna hybrid. Um, the reason I'm recommending this move is because um, it is extremely flexible and it is extremely easy to play as a whole. Um, in this situation, black no longer has the center fourth trick. However, um, the best move for black in this situation is to immediately hunt down this extremely powerful bishop um, by playing the move knight, um, uh, knight a5. Um, by playing knight a5, um, what black is doing is um, forcing, force, basically forcing the bishop to go to a, uh, b3 so that when black takes, uh, we don't take with our center pawn, we can take with our outer pawn. So the entire point is to trade the knight for the bishop, um, as a compensation, we will have an open A file, um, but we will have a ruined pawn structure. Um, so that's uh, the downside. And uh, in, a lot, in a lot of cases, black will play the move D5. And after, after, um, after E takes D5, although this is not an engine best move, um, engine best move is actually to play, uh, play Knight F3 and then to run into this. Um, I personally do not understand this position. I don't understand why this is good for white, so I am not going to recommend it. Um, but I'm going to recommend the move takes, um, because after takes, takes, um, there's this move, uh, Queen H5. Um, and then after... Um, after a knight uh, b4 threatening a fork, what we're going to do is we're going to play the very calm move, um, king d1. Uh, not natural at all, but very calm. And then after bishop e7, uh, we're just going to complete our uh, development um, by playing knight f3. And then um, we're going to continue the game from that position. Uh, the engine evaluates this as a dead zero. Um, so it's a complete equal position. So there are lots of juice in this position, so I recommend having fun with this position. Um, but eventually I'm going to upload a middle game video where I will go over uh, the middle game for this specific situation. Um, starting from next week, I'll be uploading the part 2 of the series, which is going to be the middle game of each of the openings that I did. Um, so keep an eye out for that, because middle game explanation will be coming, and if you want to see more of that, please um, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you are enjoying the video so far. Now let's look at another variation in this position. Rather than going for the quote unquote the best move when uh, black plays the most natural uh, bishop b5. Now in this position, I would actually recommend playing knight f3 and transpose into the four knights Italian. However, um, there is a very interesting sideline here. Um, f of playing the move f4. Now this is a very dynamic um, opening and it deserves a video of its own. So if you're interested, please leave a like on this video and I'll create an entire video just for this specific position. However, um, just keep in mind that if black plays bishop c4 in this position, transpose into the four knights Italian. Now with that in mind, let's <laughs> look at the move uh, d6. Now one thing to note about this position is that the dark squared bishop is going to have a hard time developing in this situation and also at the same time the light squared bishop for white is going to be very limited in terms of development. The only good squares that I see right now is going to be uh, bishop e6. Um, so thus in order to avoid knight a5 idea from earlier I like to play the move a3. And you may be wondering, hey, but potato flip, I thought you can just play bishop e6 to trade this. Now, let me just show you the idea of a3 first, and then I'll go over that. 
So the entire point of going a3 is so that when a5 is played, knight a5 is played, we can just push back, pull back the bishop to the square. And if um, black decides to play bishop e6, you lock it down with the knight. And by any chance, if uh, black plays the move c5 here, the knight is going to get trapped. And here's why. We're going to give a check first. And after, I don't know, take with the queen, takes, takes, the knight is trapped. So th for this reason, um, this is not a good line. And since we played a3, um, what if bishop e6 is played right away? Well, in this case, what we're going to do is play the move uh, knight d5 once again. Uh, with a very similar idea. If knight takes, then we always have a fork, which is always knight. If bishop takes, we're going to take back with the pawn. And after knight e7, um, this should be a pretty equal position. When engine looks at this position, uh, it's approximately equal, like plus 0 for advantage for um, white. But I feel like um, you, there's lots of life to this position and you can really, really uh, get lots of juice from this position. Basically d6 and then a3. Um, but let's look at what will happen if black just decides to play something else. Uh, like just a casual development move like e7. Um, then in this position, what I would recommend for you is to play uh, knight g e2. Um, now this is a very, very common idea in this kind of situation because of the move um, bishop uh, g4 pinning the knight. If we were to develop this knight on f3 square, the bishop can always develop into the g4 square pinning the knight. But if we develop into the e2 square, this won't work because we have to move uh, f3. That's why um, developing the knight, the knight on g to g e uh, to e2 is a very viable option. Um, so the middle game for this is very dynamic, and it's uh, and it's going to be featured on a separate video uh, that will be released about three weeks from now. Uh, next week, the video will be upon the middle game of the Vienna Gambit on how to deal with the middle game positions. Uh, so please keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.